sealed in a living tomb. Awful doom of Mohammed Masfui, who murdered 36 Moroccan girls, whipped daily with thorns. He was to be crucified, but Sultan Abdul Aziz, moved by foreigner protests, commuted his sentence. With details of Flindish cruelty that cannot be fully realized, Mohammed Masfui, the arch murderer of Marrakesh, Morocco, was walled up alive. It was this Masfui who was to have been crucified for his terrible crimes. It is known that he murdered not fewer than 36 young women and who was saved from that fashion of execution by the outcry of the resident foreign officials. Masfui was a cobbler and public letter writer. Associated with him in his crimes was an old woman of 70 named Anna. Many girls of the city disappeared in the last days of April, and the parents of one young woman traced her to the cobbler's shop. Anna was put to the torture and confessed. She told that the girls who came to dictate letters were treated to drugged wine and then beheaded. Twenty decapitated bodies were found in a deep pit under the shop and sixteen more in the garden. Anna died under the torture by an ancient Moorish custom. Mesfui was condemned to be crucified. His crucifixion was set for May 2nd, but this form of punishment was given up because of the foreign clamor, and it was announced by Sultan Abdul Aziz that Mesfui would be beheaded. He was kept in the Marrakesh jail until outside attention was dulled, and then on May 15th, his torture began. Daily, he was led into the marketplace and whipped with switches of the thorny acacia. Ten strokes were given each day, and each stroke drew blood. After each flogging, the cobbler's back was toughened and anointed with vinegar and oil so that it might be fit for the next day's ordeal. So the daily whippings went on. And when it was seen that despite all care, Miss Fuey was falling into exhaustion, it was decided to carry out the supreme sentence. This was that he be walled up alive in the public marketplace. The day of execution was set for Monday, June 11th, the Marrakesh Market Day. The news spread and the marketplace was thronged with thousands of Moroccans who squatted in the blazing sunlight and waited for the ghastly show to commence. Just outside the jail where Mesfusi was confined stand the chief bazaar. It has very thick walls, and in one of these facing the marketplace, two masons dug a hole six feet high, two feet wide, and two feet deep. Mesfui was thrust into the recess in the thick wall. The masons stood aside, and the crowd struggled and fought to get in the front rank, scoffling in derision of the pelting Mesfui with the awful of the marketplace. Then the masons came forward and deliberately laid on the first course of the masonry. The wall rose to Mesfui's knees, and then the chief jailer came forward and gave him bread and water. The masons again stood aside, and again the crowds jeered and beslabbered the victim. So it went on, stone by stone, until only Mesfui's screaming head was seen. The last stones were thrust in place, and Mesfui's living tomb was completed. Night came, braziers were lit, coffee was made, and still Mesfui screamed and the crowds yelled. Tuesday came in, and Mesfui was still screaming for mercy. So it went on all day and night. When Wednesday broke, those close to the wall reported that the prisoner was only moaning. Finally, the moaning stopped, and the delayed business of the market was resumed. The Dawson News, July 18, 1906. I leave you in peace and love.